Um, okay, so when you die, resurrect the 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 sound of the trumpets and the second coming of Christ. Uh, we all basically drop our clothes and ascend to heaven, right? Those who truly believe. So we're that's, all naked in heaven. It's technically yeah. But you know, there's no sex or well, b- but that goes back to because we come pure again right. before Eve grabbed the apple and shared it with Adam. And there is no, there is no male or female in heaven. Well, there will be no male and female because sex won't be a part that we'll care about. You're not reproducing in heaven. But so, so what I'm trying to get at is, we we said, you know. What is this? The rapture. The rapture is a death of flesh, right? So the flesh just vanishes. When you, before rapture occurs, because rapture hasn't occurred yet, because we're still here, right? Technically, I mean, rapture could have occurred, and we're just like the so ones you're, that no. messed at, out. At this point, you're no. talking about pre-trib or post-trib. This is very, very philosophical discussion. Right, absolutely. This is, you know, just just a hypothetical so let's say it's pre-rapture. Uh, you die. You know, I die. My brother died in January, right? Uh, would that be his rapture? Well, at this point, does because his flesh died, but, but his spirit going lived on. down the same rabbit hole is he not already in purgatory? I mean, are or we is not purgatory, in purgatory only now? Old Testament? No, I I believe that there is a purgatory until the rapture. See, but this is all philosophy that we're building right. off of well off of theology. many different doctrines yeah and it's the biggest thing is it's hard to build a doctrine well off biblical if you're going to pick and choose what you want and you either go ahead what does the scripture well, say about for, it for, for me guys for me i am not going to dwell on prophecy and you shouldn't it, right, right. Shouldn't. Like I'm not going to sit there and dwell on prophecy, and I'm not going to sit there and and let it affect me, and I'm not going to sit there and and spend a lot of time on it, um, because you know, especially I feel like, you know, old people especially they sit there and they're constantly sitting there going, "Man, the rapture is going to happen." Wait, we've been hearing this for a hundred plus years. Well, that that's the thing is like every it's like, time we've been it's the about, end of times. Yeah, everyone's we've been hearing about the second coming of Christ since Christ died. Every can you unclog him? He's what? stuck on the table. Fucking pedigree dog with feelings. Running away from his angry master. I'm not that angry. I actually show him a lot more love. Ooh, you're a lab dog now. Get wrecked, nerd. No choice in the but, matter. But no, we've definitely, I agree with you, we've pushed a lot more towards doctrine or ideologies I, and philosophy, and we, we've we been hearing since, and I quote, I think it was like 1912, it was like, oh, it's the end of the world. Oh, we're going to deal with this. And then Hitler came, oh, it's the end of the world. Vietnam came, oh, it's the end of the world. Every time we turn around, they're like, this person's the Antichrist. 70s this person's came. the Antichrist. Right. All these different things came, and we have all these different movements. And it's like, oh, Jesus is alive again. It's like, awesome. It's like, oh, but it's the end of the world. Because this is a... we've had an end of the world Every forever. Year. The apostles in the Bible were like, oh, so he's going to be coming back soon. 2,000 years we've been experiencing yeah. Yeah. through about... social media, one where social. End of the world. Hold on. How come, and this is my biggest issue, and I have a huge fucking soapbox about this. How come for 2,000 years we've been experiencing the end of the world? 2,000 years. Yeah, no, and and I agree with you, because at some point, can we just accept the fact that we will not know when it's going to happen? Because that right there is scripture. It states. It Absolutely. does. States explicitly. No man knows the time or day. So if you are sitting there going, well, I see the signs, then guess what? You don't see the signs. And you know, we can jump off the doctrine of a certain number of people will know the signs. Because you know what? That would make sense. A certain number of people. But they're also, even if they put it on broadcast, it's not going to matter. Because not everyone's going to know. It's going to be irrelevant. The only way you're going to know is faith. So, if you believe in Christianity, there's this. 
if you believe in any other religion, you have your own doctrines and your own understandings. It, that's absolutely. like, it, and I pull, why I don't? It, oh, just leave it alone. Just fucking leave it alone and stop preaching to me about how you see all the signs yep. and how it's about to come. And I keep having to keep my fucking mouth shut very, very often. So we didn't because my question, people though. who are important to me. What about the we will. I don't think we should ever try to micromanage religion. Yeah. Re- the biggest the government does a good enough job of that anyway. Not even. No. Like a your, micromanaging. Your pulpits and publishing houses are the biggest thing that micromanage everything. Oh, you're this. Well, you can't do this because this. I Period agree. dot the end. Oh, I, I agree with that, too. I mean, it's the so it's the the government micromanages the church. To a degree, the big the, church, not individual right. churches, yes. But, but it's it's the it's typically because hmm. we we've touched it's, on this that's, on podcast. That's, we we can get into opinions of who who's micromanaging and who's not micromanaging inside of a church, and it depends on the actual church and the teaching and the or the false teaching of see. But th- what's this going is on in this that is church. where I. I I'm also a big fan, cutting Mike off, of taxing the fucking church. Yes. You know what? How about we do actual separation of church and state? Fucking tax the church. Here's How the is benefits. That separation? Here's the benefits to taxing the church. Because you do what you want socially, but you still live in the United States. If we tax the church, you know what goes away? The fake churches. Yep. Because Hands the fake down. the fake churches, the mega churches, they can't afford the, the yep. tax. they they can't afford the taxes because all they're the only reason that they're getting away with it and the only reason that they're doing it isn't because they have faith and I hate them taking advantage of people who legitimately have faith. Yep. But the only reason that they're getting away with it is because they don't get taxed and so they can pocket all this money and they can pocket all this money and they can and they pocket use all this their money. Tax exempt forms to buy all kinds of illegitimate stuff that's not really Correct. needed yep. by the church. Like, like everybody cars. likes to bring up any of these mega churches. Oh, they have private planes. They have yep. houses that are, well, it's technically owned by the church. So they don't have to pay taxes on it. It's like, can can we just get away from avoiding yeah. all this? If we're I really mean, trying to imagine... push churches to the way we did the tax stamp act. Can you imagine not having to pay $800,000 on a, on a $10 million jet? Like, you know what I mean? Like, 10 million. You're talking about brand new $40 million jet. Yeah, but a G6, I think, was like 20 to 40 used. It's $800,000 per 10 million. Exactly. It's insane. Like, that's the amount of sales tax you get to save. So, if it, for every 20, when you spend $20 million, you're saving 16. Or one point six million. Exactly, and that's that's my soapbox and Mike's soapbox on a piece. But let's go back to what your question was. I the, mean, is it my soapbox? You cut me off. It was a point. Yes, I mean, you definitely are on the same fucking standpoint on that one. Tell me I'm wrong. Oh you're, wait, you. <laughs> At least he admitted it. He was like, "And I am cutting you off." <laughs> Boom. I know because this is. Oh my gosh! I will. I am turning your mic off about it because it drives me crazy. But you were asking a question philosophically. Go ahead. So, again, rapture is where the mass of believers, right? A majority leave. Yes. Boom. Go right. True believers, but wouldn't you call? Human natural human death a rapture? No. Why not? Your spirit's still raptured. I call that going home. I call that leaving this existence. This is the closest to hell we will ever get in my belief. Christians will. Yes. Yeah, and that and like I said, or in my believers belief, will. Oh, oh my god, you brought out pretzels. Oh. But I wouldn't call my death a rapture. I would call a rapture a multitude of people. A majority, a mass populace, being raptured a thing versus my death being a rapture. I would love to hear an artist out there do a rapture. There's your beat. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I wouldn't classify my death as a rapture. Right. I would just I would say that he's going home because in every funeral I've ever done, <laughs> every funeral I've been around or with, it's never Love been. You. Oh, he's been raptured. It's no, he's going home and he's at peace. Or that that's just where it's gone. It's never been that way. So let's go let's go a step further. I'm all ears. Let's go. You're bringing stuff to the table. I'm enjoying this. How many funerals would you go to knowing the person did not accept Christ in our life <laughs> and be willing to go, yeah, sorry guys. I'm the wrong your person one, to ask. Your loved I, one went to hell. I will go to every single one of them. Because if I can be the one person to, in my belief, bring them to Christ, why would I not? I mean, it's not a funeral, realistically, is not for the person who died. Yep. A funeral is for, for the, the pe living. people who are left. Yep. So Because the soul no longer resides in that body. I want to see, I want to see pastors actually have a set the guys that are that are officiating funerals actually have a set to really say the truth. Instead of covering it up and say, well, you know, God bless his soul. He's resting in a better place or she's resting in a better place. We oh, don't know, get me wrong. Blah, blah, blah. I will still say God bless their soul. But that's where I stop. Because if I know they weren't a Christian, if I know they weren't this, and because... Lay I'm down. a Christian minister because I'm this. This is what I believe. So I'll only really be pointed towards those types of funerals. I'm not going to go do a Sikh funeral or a Muslim funeral. It It's just, it's right. not in my cards. It's not in, so I'm not going to go to a Muslim funeral and be like, oh, he's in a better place. I don't know because I don't know his faith verbatim. To, I know a lot about the Quran, but I don't know about it in depth. So I would be bringing no value to his funeral. It, there's a separation there. I want to see people grow a step and actually say, in a funeral, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Your loved one went to hell. No. But no, that's no. not I, the end of it. Why do again, that? Again, a funeral is not for the person who died. It's for the people who are there. Do you think saying your loved one who just died is in hell is going to bring people to Christ? This is where so why would specifically you tell, tell me that. This, tell me that. This is where extending the truth, extending the truth is the best possible outcome. It's like for someone that committed suicide, your loved one is no longer experiencing pain. And the only reason I can say that is because there was a time I thought the best thing I could do was hang myself, kill right. myself. Right. Because it would make everyone's life around me better. Right. Either right or wrong, that's where my mindset was. The biggest thing and the best thing you can do there for those individuals is they're no longer experiencing pain. Don't go through as like, oh, they're going to hell because they weren't a Christian, they weren't this, they weren't that. And you go through the gambit of crap and because, make everyone feel horrible. How does that benefit the people who are left? Does that draw people to Christ? If you go, your person's in hell, does that in any way, shape, or form, can you possibly conceive draw people to Christ? Please tell me. Tell me. No, I'm not saying it will. But where's Then why the, would you say that? Where's the value? Why would you lie to them? You're not lying to them. You can omit this information. So we'll go back biblical, and I'll totally play Demo's Advocate. Demo's Advocate? Demo's Advocate. Woo! We going back eight years from we now. We going back. We going back ages to MC World. Demo's advocate. Why would you not just love God, love people with that? Why would you not be love your neighbor as yourself? Do you really want to be told, oh, your brother went to hell? Your brother just died. If I told you, it was like, your brother's going to hell. Like, at his funeral, in front of all your family, your brother's going to hell. He's dying. He's fucked. He's going to burn forever or he's going to freeze forever because he's away from the light of God. If my stepdad doesn't change his ways, he will. 
But that's we're not talking about your stepdad. We're talking we're about your brother. Your brother just passed. Uh-huh. If I had shown up to your funeral and I'd be like, "This is great," but you realize your brother's in hell right now, it and changed- that he's a worthless sack of shit, and they never contributed anything to his faith. It changes your perspective and makes you no longer want to be a part of what's happening. But you don't like. Like, like would you want to listen faith. to anything Tell else I had to say in that regard? Would you want? Would you want to embrace any kind of message I'm trying to give you? Would I have just closed I'm in a the door? Place, but if I, at yeah, the yeah, time, but, as an, as an but average person, think I of, hear what you're think saying. Think of yeah, no. What I'm saying is, put yourself in that perspective.